Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Gotta Get Running. It's good to see you guys again. I'm Phil Hargis, your host of Gotta Get Running. Chris Farley, the usual co-host, he is outside. Our, he's actually running right now. He's up in Boston somewhere, doing some good runs up there, getting ready for the fall marathon season here. It is fall marathon season. We've been you know, training in the sun and the heat all summer long, and we're, we're really welcoming this nice, cool weather that we're having here. And uh, most of us have chosen a while back. The fall marathon is going to be running. Uh, I had a hard time deciding which ones I was going to do this year, so I finally made a decision this past week, thanks to the uh, good, grace, gracious uh, buddy of mine, Tim Soltran, was able to transfer me a bib to my favorite marathon in the United States, that being the Marine Corps Marathon. So I will be uh, at the start line this year for the Marine Corps Marathon. Come out there, and uh, hopefully you got, a lot of you guys are out there running it with us. But uh, we have Rick Nielis in the house today. He is the race director of the Marine Corps Marathon. Rick, it's great to have you back on the show. Well, Phil, I tell you, I am delighted to be here. It is 31 days out from the Marine Corps Marathon. Ooh -ah. And uh, No, we go oorah. <laughs> oorah. There you go. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it is a, a, you know, each race has a distinct uh, identity. And this one is no different from the, the past 35. And what exactly do you mean by it? Let's get right into it. What, do you mean, how, what is the identity of this race? Well, the, the first, you know, when you, you, you're talking about runners, you've got to talk about the course. And uh, this is the first time that we're going to lose Constitution Avenue because of construction work in, in the district. But it, it has allowed us to, uh, you know, again, to uh, take an opportunity to uh, have the runners run uh, in and out on Independence Avenue, and they'll make a turn on the 17th Street uh, and make their way back to Constitution. And really, what that does is will bring them up a lot closer to the World War II Memorial. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to see uh, just a little bit different monuments and statues that they m normally might not have seen any other year. Of course, you know the the, the Martin Luther King uh, Memorial is now uh, in an eyesight of the course, and. You know, it's just, uh, you know, again, you know, uh, Indian summer, fall, Washington, D.C., you know, what a better time to run. It, it's the greatest, man. It's the greatest place to run in the entire country, and this race is the best. I mean, we're ready for this thing. Well, I'm glad you, you're in, going to be on the start line with us. Uh, you know, what really makes it exciting, too, is the, the fact that, you know, the, you know we have 30,000 registered runners. Uh, not counting the 10,000 registered runners in our 10K. So when you put that mass of, of marathon and 10K runners coming across the same finish line, uh, it's absolutely a, a, an amazing sight to see. And, and this race is really set up for the spectators. And like you said, the spectators are going to have different things to see. It's going to be actually easier for the spectators to see their runners this year because of the way Independence is going to be kind of set up. So, you know, that's great. We'll go back to that in a second. So, you mentioned Martin Luther King. Let's go back to that one for a second. How were you able to work the Martin Luther King Memorial into the, uh, along the route? Well, it, it's when we were, uh, you know, realizing that, you know, uh, finding uh, the appropriate distance uh, for a marathon course it always is difficult because uh, permits, law enforcement, national park, you know, uh, really tries to contain our 26 Point two miles, uh, you know, into the you know, the same shape that that we originally have. So, uh, looking at where the memorial was, the FDR memorial, uh, it, it it came to us that if we could keep the runners and the spectators in that vicinity of where the Martin Luther King Memorial is, it will only enhance the race because the runners, uh, the the spectators now will have a chance to uh, find their loved ones. And it's, 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 it's so easy to find, you know, the person that you're tracking on race day. And it's going to be even more so because we're doing some new technology this year with the social networking uh, capabilities. So they're going to be able to text. They're going to be able to tweet. Uh, they're going to be able to find on the 10K, 15K, 20, 25, wow. 30. 35, 40 K, you know, able to sign up and track their, their runners where they are at, at that time. And when they're not tracking them, they can do sightseeing and, and enjoy the sights. Yeah, and there's, there's going to be plenty of entertainment on the course. We'll get to that in a, in a second, too. So you get real-time runner tracking, and it's at every 5K marker, which is good. Yep. And so how, how, does, how does somebody go ahead and how do, the, how do the spectators sign up for the service? Do you do that through your website or marinemarathon.com? You do. Or? Within a couple, uh, in a couple weeks, we decided to uh, str strategically uh, uh, hold back so it, uh, it doesn't get lost in the email traffic. So about two weeks before uh, the Marine Corps Marathon, they will receive a message to sign up 
for this social networking uh, capability. Now, is that through Facebook or Twitter? Or both? It is. It's going to be on both. Yeah. Okay. So it's uh, it's it's really uh, revolutionary uh, again to uh, make the the whole experience not only for the runner but for those who are tracking the runners uh, much more rewarding. That's pretty awesome. I've done you know my share of races, and I, I haven't seen any race that I've been in that has that type of capability. I mean, that's pretty cool. So it's, like, if I go past the 5K timing, Matt, is that going to automatically post to my wall on Facebook that Phil Hargis just completed 5K in Absolutely. 25 minutes or it is. It is uh, state of the art. Uh, we are one of the few races that, and, and at, at, the, at this level with the, the amount of runners that, and the amount of uh, messaging that's going to go across Facebook and, 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 and the social media and uh, texting is, is going to be just really phenomenal that we're able to uh, send that much information out over the wave, wavelengths and, and, and people all over. And, and you know how the social networking uh, works is that once somebody gets it on Facebook and they're going to push it out to some of their other friends yeah. and, and it just explodes. So we, we're excited to see exactly uh, you know, how it all uh, interacts. And this is actually going to help the runners run faster because they're not going to have to stop and slow down and update their cell phone and say, all right, I just crossed the 5K mark in 25 minutes. They'll be able to do it on the fly and the, and the timing chip will do it all for them. They will be able to do what runners need to be do, And that's focusing on the finish line, focusing you know, one foot in front of the other and not worrying about uh, all the other uh, devices that they might be carrying right. on race day. You got the chip to post your, your times and you got the camera guys that are taking all the pictures Pictures. you could possibly ask for a view as you pass all these all these awesome uh, all the awesome uh, landmarks that there are to see here in Washington DC. Um, so let's back up to last year. You had a, you had your 35th anniversary run, run last year and and I know that went well. I was down there as a spectator last year watching uh, some of my friends from uh, Back of My Feet run and you know everybody else in the running community here. But you got an, after I last uh, talked to you last year, you had a chance to go off and do some pretty interesting stuff with the uh, Marathon Flame for the 25th uh, 100th anniversary of that race. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that all went down? Really, we had an incredible experience last year. We, uh, being United States Marine Corps and, uh, and, a, and a love of history and, and a love of tradition, we wanted to be able to combine the 2,500 anniversary of the Battle of Marathon when the Athenians beat the Persians and bring that to our runners and bring it to the district, uh, this whole experience of, of what uh, transpired on that day. So the flame of Marathon uh, happens to burn in Hopkinton, which is the sister city of Marathon, Greece. And when we found that out, we uh, went up to Boston, took custody of the flame. It actually is uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, burning in front of the, the local police station. So the police chief gave us custody of the flame. We took it to the USS Constitution to uh, wow. show our uh, connection to our naval heritage. We took it to uh, New York City. We felt it was important to uh, bring it to New York City, to Manhattan. We took it to Philadelphia, to the birthplace of, of the Marine Corps at Tun Tavern, and then brought it to Washington, D.C., uh, not only to the commandants uh, at Marine Barracks 8th and I, but we also then, on a Wednesday night before the marathon, delivered the, the, the flame from Marathon Greece to the ambassador at the Greek Embassy here in Washington, D.C. And then you get, did you, so you got to deliver the torch, or was it, was it somebody we, else got to do that? Or? We had a, a young Marine dressed as a, an Athenian warrior who got to play the part, and uh, you know, uh, everywhere we went, he delivered the flame and, and, uh, and was the, the, the custodian of the flame until we extinguished it. And that was an authorized Marine uniform then for the duty, yeah, it was, for the duty day there? <laughs> that, it was a, an authentic warrior uniform, and uh, he, he looked the part, and, uh, and he was very professional when he was wearing that uh, uniform. And for, and for those of you uh, at home watching that don't know, Hopkinton is the start line of the Boston Marathon there. That there. is correct. Uh, a very, very special place, place to anybody that runs marathons there. So uh, that's great. And there's also some uh, Greek wreaths involved? There is. You know, uh, you know again, uh, you know, running is, you know, as our sport, is, is, is 
the interesting is not only that you run, but you get to meet people when you're running, you know, the people beside you who are crossing the finish line. Uh, you know, when you're at the start line, you get to interact and, and meet people. And as a race director, it's really no different that I get to meet really some interesting people. And one of the persons from uh, Greece that I was able to meet was uh, Dimitri Karakitis. And Dimitri Karakitis is the son of his father uh, is the 1946 Boston Marathon winner. And when you look at the, the story of uh, Mr. Karakitis, uh, during the war, uh, his uh, small little town, uh, you know, uh, a couple German soldiers were uh, killed and then for retribution that they decided they were going to kill or, uh, it, uh, uh, 100 uh, Greek uh, males from oh, the town. Wow. He was one of the 100, and when they looked into his, uh, to see what valuables he might have, he had run in the 1936 uh, uh, Berlin, uh, Berlin Marathon. Olympics. Olympics. And wow. he had the, the stamp of the, of, the, of the Nazi party, and they pulled him out replaced them and killed 100 people that day and he got to live and he dedicated wow. himself that he would make a difference and he went on to win Boston and he went on to really represent Greeks uh, in, in running in, in USA tra or in, in, the, in the IAAF and in the Olympic sport and uh, so his son lives the honor and basically took reefs uh, that normally are only used for Boston uh, for the winners, uh, these uh, are the uh, the leaves of the of the trees from uh, of Marathon Greece, and uh, he brings them to the Marine Corps, and he's coming back again this year. Great! And so Dimitri Karakitis will deliver the 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 wreaths that will for the second time will go on the first, second, third place winners. Fantastic! What a great story. So um, I know that you also were talking about last year about some of the uh, some of the. Uh, the initiatives you have to make the Marine Corps Marathon one of the greener races out there too. And how, how successful have those programs been and what are you doing with that this year? You know, it is really, uh, it's quite challenging when, you know, the, <laughs> between cups, wrappers, uh, goo. Uh, the stuff is everywhere when you're out there running those races. It is out there. And, you know, and we had received a silver certificate for, uh, you know, as being environmental friendly. We worked real close with uh, uh, Arlington County in, in, the, in the recycle uh, area. And so uh, we continue to do that, you know, and we look for new ways to see what is environmental friendly. Uh, and uh, so uh, we are, we have not lost uh, uh, our eye on the bubble on uh, being environmental friendly. I think runners, you know, uh, we, we know that when we're out running on trails and streets that, uh, you, know, we, we, you know, we like that we're connected with the environment. And uh, so it's really important for us to continue to be able to show uh, that we're good stewards of, of the environment. And hopefully, just like running, where we try to uh, be role models and get people to be healthy and, and, and fitness, that the same thing with the way we do things with uh, being more green will uh, get other people uh, excited about uh, saving the environment. Yeah, I, I definitely feel connected with the environment. I mean, there's nothing worse than when you're like out there running in the streets and you see the trash and the, it's, it's all over the place. Definitely. And uh, you know, it's, it, it, we as runners respect that and you know, want to do what we can to to, take, to do our part with regards okay. to that. So uh, you're all set and ready to go for this year. Any, anything uh, exciting going on at the Expo this year? Well, you know, we are back to the DC Armory. So when uh, we were n no longer allowed to be uh, uh, in the DC Convention Center, which is sadly, it is, a, is absolutely a, a beautiful uh, facility. But uh, the, some of the politics in, in D.C. Uh, did not allow us to be there. So DC's a little political. A little <laughs> political. And uh, so we're in the D.C. Armory. And like everything uh, at the, that we do at the, at the Marine Corps Marathon, you've know, you got to look at whatever you have. You look at it from a positive standpoint, and then you, you enhance it. And that's really what we're uh, doing with the D.C. Armory. Uh, we're going back to a two and a half day uh, expo, so people can come in on Thursday. Thursday night. Uh, and, and, uh, 
and, and, and pick up their packets early. Uh, the, the nice thing is, it was free parking. Yeah, so, so you So there's a, an advantage for those who drive, would be able to park and not have to pay a parking sure. fee and, and, and able to come and go Tons of parking. Uh, uh, multiple times. So that is a plus. Uh, the, we're gonna, uh, it's about 35,000 square feet smaller than what we like, but we're gonna build some <laughs> tents and we're gonna build a tent kind of uh, additional expo uh, uh, facility that, uh, again, so we don't, so from a runner standpoint, he doesn't lose anything by going to DC Armor. And in fact, you know, one of the, probably the bit real pluses is that the Metro exits right on the property. Uh, you can't beat that. Uh, so Metro is the way to go. And if you do drive, you're going to park for free and be able to just walk across the street. So yeah, it's great. I mean, anybody that's been in the running community around here, you know, long enough knows the DC Armory is where there's plenty of package pickups. And it's, and it is, like you said, it's very convenient, both Metro and driving. I mean, it's, it really is one of the few places in all of DC where you can actually drive there and not have to worry about finding a parking park spot. So, uh, any special guest speakers or anything coming up there at the at the armory that we'd want to like? Well, that we don't see over we, there, and we can try to catch. There's a big change. We decided that what used to take up maybe uh, a couple thousand feet of uh, you know uh, uh, guest speakers with uh, the the seating and, and 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 blocking that area off, we t have taken that uh, uh, symposium. Mm -hmm and moved it to our race headquarters. So this will be the first time that if you want to uh, partake in the speaker series, and that's going to go on Saturday, and it's going to happen at the race headquarters, which is the Hyatt on Capitol Hill, 400 uh, mm. uh, New Jersey Avenue. And, uh, and there's a number of things. So we're trying to use our race headquarters in a, in a, in a lot more uh, interaction with the, with the runners. And you know, and if you want, uh, you know, it, it really it, it kicks off with Friday, and and Friday we're going to have for the first time. You know, Phil, you might have remembered last year I tried uh, something new. We tried to, uh, and it really was successful. Was where we had runners who are on our runners club, and and mm -hmm. and, the, and to be in a runners club, the the Marine Corps Marathon Runners Club, you have to have at least run five. Marine Corps marathons, and then you get a patch for 5, 10, 15, and 20, and so on. And we all know that you know there's only four runners that have got the 35-year patch. Uh, and those are our ground pounders. Yep. So what we did last year was we invited our uh, running club mentors to really come and run uh, a, uh, a mile, mile and a half on a Saturday morning with the race director in front of the kids who are getting ready for the Healthy Kids Fun Run at the North Pentagon Park Lot. What a, a lot of fun, a lot of enthusiasm. These uh, you know, experienced, dedicated runners stayed around and interact with the kids. They worked as volunteers. And I think some of the kids noticed that, you know, hey, these adults, uh, you know, care about what they were doing. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. But one of the other things that had come up was the first, or the, the running club said, wouldn't it be nice if we ever got together in a social setting? So we're trying that for the first time at the Hyatt at 3.30 uh, p.m. On, it will be the, the running club uh, social networking. And they can register, you have to register uh, on our website. And uh, so that's for the runners club. And then at seven o'clock is the pep rally. And the pep, the pep rally, rally is for the, those runners who are running their first marathon, first Marine Corps first marathon. Marine. And they're the only ones allowed to come and, and, and experience the pep rally. And then we're gonna do a lot of fun things with the pep rally. There's the you know, sponsors and vendors will be there. There'll be uh, a disc jockey playing music because uh, it, you know, it is in the evening if they wanna get up and dance. Uh, they also have the opportunity to uh, meet other first-time marathoners. So if you're from uh, South Dakota, we'll have a South Dakota table and every state in, in the union will be represented as, as well as certain countries. Uh, we'll flip the cards and then you can go, if you're a four-hour marathoner, you can go to the four-hour table and you can meet somebody that you might see on Sunday you know, who are just running the same pace. So, because if you're running your first marathon in a city that you've never been to before, like all those variables, I mean, it can be a very intimidating thing. You don't really know what, 
what to expect, I mean, where to go, when you need to be there, you know, all those things. It can be pretty intimidating. So it sounds like this event will be perfect for that type of runner. Well, that's it. You got the, you know, the, the pep rally, you got yeah. the, you know, the runner's club. And then I failed to mention, you know, when we start the day, I mean, something new that we're doing is that, uh, you know, I realize that, you know, you know, as runners, especially, you know, I look at myself, uh, you know, as a marathon runner, as I get older, you know, you know, you know, historically we talk about, you know, not, you know, stretching and getting, staying limber, you know, that we get tight. So we uh, formed a partnership uh, 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 with uh, uh, Down Dog uh, Yoga uh, with Lululemon. And that in Georgetown, <laughs> and we have done two sessions uh, of hot yoga uh, for our runners, and we have a third one coming up uh, in uh, October 23rd on the Sunday before. But during marathon weekend, you can register for Friday and Saturday sessions, and Saturday is getting very close to being filled up. Friday, we're only taking 180 in those sessions, so 180 yogis. Can, or even if you've never done it for the, it's going to be your first time. You want to uh, sign up uh, for either one of those days or both, and it's going to go at 7:30 in the morning. So from 7:30 to 9, you can get in a, a, a yoga, free yoga session. Uh, you know, compliments of uh, Lululemon in Georgetown as well as Down Dog Yoga. The, the, the hot yoga is great. I started doing it uh, several years ago to to try to help me adapt to the heat better after a tough. Uh, after a tough Disney race. Okay. I mean, and not only is it good for, for pre-race uh, conditioning, it's also outstanding for recovery when you're done with it too. It's, it, it, you know, it's, uh, my wife is a marathon runner, got injured, took up hot yoga, and, uh, you know, after 18 months, she's, uh, you know, definitely uh, injury free. It's and uh, in fact, you know, uh, you know, she's gonna get to do something really unique uh, this year at the race. You know, uh, everybody knows that I have, uh, and, and if you didn't, don't know, the, <laughs> I, I, I have two dogs. <laughs> I have two dogs, Miles and Molly. They're both my, my mascots. Miles is, uh, is the older and uh, the, the boy uh, dog, uh, bulldog. And uh, Miles is going to run his first 10K race at Marine Corps this year. With your wife. So, and so my wife will be his handler. She will make sure that Miles doesn't get lost on the course. So they will be lining up at 08 on uh, October 30th to run the 10K. Now I was reading my rules here. I thought it said pets weren't allowed in these races. <laughs> There's very little. I'm just kidding. No. With the race director's wife. That's, well, <laughs> race director's wife. And as a race director, you do have a few perks yes. in this business. <laughs> and some of those perks might be that you can give waivers once in a while for a good cause. So, and this is a good cause. It, is, it sounds like a great cause. I mean, now what kind of time can we expect out of your dog? Well, he's still in training and we don't want to put any pressure on him. You know, you know how it is about, you know, first time marathoners and first time 10K, no matter what race you're running. The fact that you're out there, you're uh, really setting the example. And when you come across the line, as you know, you know, that first time, it's a PR. So That's this right. is a PR for Miles, you know, whether he does a, you know, a 30 minute uh, 10K or we let him come in in around an hour. Well, that's pretty exciting. I, uh, you gotta let me know how he does that. I will, here. I will. Um, so let's talk about the race this year. What can the runners expect uh, while they're out there on the course? I mean, I know there's always lots of entertainment and food and stuff. What can, what, what can they expect this year? Well, you know, it, it, you really gotta start the, that morning and, 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 and take in the experience of, of the, you know, runner's village. So when the first thing, uh, as, a, as a runner, you're uh, waking up, making your way to the start line, you want to take Metro, really it's the best way to get to, to the start line. The parking is crazy you, down there. It is, it is, parking is very tough. Take the Metro. You c take the Metro, come into the North Pentagon parking lot, you know, there's uh, those who want to have a, a religious service uh, that morning. We offer that. There's music. Uh, there's places where you can uh, just stretch out and, uh, and get limber. And then uh, you drop off your baggage and you make your way uh, to the start line. And, and then what's going to happen is, you know, there's going to be a flyover. Uh, That's Marine cool. Corps uh, MV-22 Ospreys will uh, fly over very low. We're actually, uh, we haven't had jumpers in about seven years. So we're having uh, uh, jumpers that will jump in cool. tandem. Uh, one of the jumpers, uh, uh, Dana Bauman, uh, will, uh, uh, will jump in and after he uh, 
they, they land, he will then, uh, he's missing both limbs and he will get into a, a hand cycle and then compete in, in, the, in, in the marathon. So uh, you'll, you'll have that going on. There's, uh, you know, Incredible. first time that we're using a double uh, uh, honor guard, you know, in, in memory of 9-11, that it is the 10th anniversary since the, the attack on the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that in sync with law enforcement. So you'll have the Marines as well as law enforcement giving two color guards. Uh, every flag of every runner represented at the Marine Corps will be right. uh, wow. have a flag. That's a lot of flags. It's held by the national uh, or our uh, junior ROTC down at Quantico, and these young uh, high school students are. Uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're they're getting involved. They're they're getting involved and, and hopefully becoming lifelong runners. They are. So that's cool. And then, uh, as we know, there's tons of aid stations out there uh, that are usually manned by tons of volunteers. Still looking for volunteers? Uh, I believe we're probably closed out. I think we have uh, reached the uh, uh, our full of volunteers at this point. You know, with the the hundred. 1,500 Marines and sailors that uh, worked that event, and then when you add in another 500 law enforcement, and then you know we have probably a close to another thousand uh, worth of uh, uh, from Boy Scouts and, and civic associations and so on, that uh, they're providing you know not only the water but also the the food stations that we have sure. out there, you know the the course marshals, their uh, you know, and then when you come across the the finish line. Uh, you know the fact that those those Marines are handing out the, the finishers medal and then there's obviously there's tons of stuff to do there at the finishers festival when you're done I mean just booths and music and food and drink like everywhere it's a great time and everybody's celebrating their their big accomplishment they are yeah we're trying to move people to the runners uh, village uh, and uh, and from there they can uh, you know they can uh, link up with their family members you know, that's where the Michelob Ultra beer oh, tent right. is. The free beer. Free beer. Look for me there. You've <laughs> earned it. If you run 26.2 or even the 10K, you earn it. And uh, well, I think we're getting ready to wrap up here, uh, Rick. Okay. Um, I think we covered uh, almost everything there was to do about this race. Uh, thanks for coming back here and joining me in the studio. Phil, always. Uh, enjoy to be here. This really uh, sets the tone that uh, we... By being with you, I know uh, we're very close to uh, race day. Yep, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. And if you're uh, not running, then come out there and cheer them on. We'll be, it'll be great. Get some information on marinemarathon.com. Marathon Rick, thanks again. Thank and, you, And uh, we'll see you on race day. And we'll see you guys next time on Gotta Get Running. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.